All right, y'all, what's going on? It's Combo Breaker 99. I'm back with another post-fight discussion video. All right, y'all, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the fight last night. Roxanne Matafari versus Casey O'Neill. Roxanne's last fight, you know, she went in there and um, she, put on a, she put on a good show. You know, she went in there and gave Casey O'Neill a very good fight. But it's just like I said, man, when it came down to it, this was about perfect timing. This was about perfect timing for Casey O'Neill. Um, you know, like I was telling y'all, Casey O'Neill has the tools to beat this type of Roxanne. You know, this this version of Roxanne can be beat by the tools that Casey O'Neill possesses. And that's what it was all about. That's what it was all about going into this fight and analyzing it. That's why y'all heard me talking about Casey O'Neill as far as what she could do in my keys to victory. Just just basically being real about it. Just saying, okay, she's got these type of tools to beat this version of Roxanne Matafari. But of course, when it comes down to it, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. But like I said, you know, Roxanne Matafari, she's still very dangerous. You know, she still brings a lot to the table. She still brings a big threat. But if a young, hungry fighter like Casey O'Neill can go in there and utilize the tools that she has, which, like I said, are better than Macy Barber's. She, you know, she's you know, she has um, she has more tools to kind of offset Roxanne. You know, she's going to win this fight. So that's what it just came down to, man. You know, uh, Casey O'Neill, she still sold, sold some holes in her game, but it's the fact that, you know, she she is about execution. I will say that, you know, it's not perfect execution, you know, but it's an improving execution. Now, I'm talking about that towards the end of the end of the video here. But uh, first round right away, you know, Roxanne, she wanted to go straight at it. You know, she went in, she came in jabbing, working early, applying pressure. You know, Casey, she was finding that range, landing her right hand over the left consistently. You know, um, I like the jab from Roxanne. You know, she was constantly pumping it out in the first round. But Casey O'Neill was doing a good job of finding her range and making those adjustments and landing leg kicks. You know, she was landing some nice low kicks uh, to the calf of Roxanne. Roxy, she was getting hit by one two. But Roxy, she was coming back with one twos of her own. You know, her own one twos in like the first two minutes opened up the nose of Casey O'Neill right away. Right. But Casey O'Neill, she was landing more shots. You know, she was landing more shots. Now, the thing is, the damage was showing more on Casey O'Neill, right? But Roxanne was still getting hit with bigger punches by Casey O'Neill. You know, Casey O'Neill was stinging her with the right hand over and over. You know, Casey's jab, it was long and accurate and it was setting up the right hand. So Roxanne, first round, I think it was clear that she lost the round, but she did put some damage on uh, Ro on Casey O'Neill. You know, she did damage the eye. You know, she put some, uh, you know, put that little smudge under the eye of uh, Casey O'Neill. And she did bloody the nose, but Casey, she doubled the number of strikes. You know, she was just landing the better shots, you know, up and down, you know, leg kicks and punches. Now, the second round, Casey, she opened up with combinations, still landing the right hand. Roxy, she's landing in singles, but it's Casey O'Neill landing these combinations, which are earning the respect of Roxanne. You know, Roxanne, she's still getting hit with bombs because she's coming straight in now. Like, she's not using as much lateral movement like you've seen her do in the past. This, this, time, this time around, she really wanted to go out with a bang. You know, she was kind of coming forward. And walking right into the fire so casey was finding that range and she was circling away taking away the, taking away the jab of roxanne and just really committing to her long extent long extended punches her straight punches you know roxy she was able to land some nice one twos in the pocket but again casey she was landing the harder frequent shots you know kicks and punches roxy jab this round it was pretty much taken away because of the casey right hand and just variety you know, and I could see towards the end of the round, Casey started to get a little bit cocky, started screaming like, you know, she was putting on this war. But as soon as you get cocky, now I like that energy. You know, she was putting on that warrior energy screaming. But as soon as she started doing that, it turned Roxy up. Roxy went in with the takedown. Now, nothing much happened with the takedown. So, you know, I couldn't give Roxy the round just for that one takedown. But um, that just kind of shows you that, you know, Roxanne still had it in her to, you know, try to make that adjustment. Now, if she went for the takedown earlier, you know, it might have made the fight a little bit different, but for some reason, both of these grapplers, they were respecting each other's jujitsu and their ground game, so they wanted to bang, right? Now, the last round, Roxy, she stormed in. She stormed in, letting them combos go. Still had a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of gas in her tank. You know, Casey, she's fighting off the back foot well now. You know, showing off some uh, good combinations. Roxy, she's landing those stiff right hands of her own. But again, Casey, she's throwing, she's throwing punches and kicks. You know, she landed a few good head kicks and front kicks. Um, I couldn't really see Roxy, you know, taking uh, I couldn't really see Roxy getting any respect from Casey O'Neill. And I heard some people say that Roxy stunned Casey O'Neill in the third round. I watched it twice and I didn't see it. You know, maybe, maybe she froze her up with a couple of shots somewhere in there. But I just saw Roxy going into the pocket, landing some good shots and doing damage. But she never really rocked her, in my opinion. There was a lot of trading in the third round, but it was still Casey landing more of the variety. Now, towards the mid part of the round, 
Nice adjustment by Roxanne Matafari when she started working the body with those knees. Like she went into that tie clinch. And every time she would start closing in, she trying to, you know, switch her game up, started landing some good knees to the body. Now, those knees to the body, if you want to consider those like where she was getting reaction, she was, you know, because Roxy was landing some good knees to Casey's body every time she would go in for that clinch. But Casey did a good job of breaking and going back on the outside, you know, so her work to the body was effective and she needed that earlier in the fight, in my opinion. Now, again, Roxy, she gets another takedown in that like last minute of the round. But Casey, she bounces right back up, shows that strength and, you know, uses the cage to just kind of, um, you know, get her uh, get her footing back. But Roxy, fi she finishes in close. A um, li little bit, little bit of clinch work in there, a little bit of mauling. But um, if anything, you could argue the third round went to Roxanne Matafari just because of the good knee work and the good shots in the pocket and the takedown. So. Yeah, you could give her that round, but I, I still gave it to Casey. I had it 30-27. Casey O'Neill, she's pretty much 30-27 Roxanne Matafari, in my opinion. Now, yeah, I could see that last round going to Roxanne. Y'all could argue that, but um, split decision, that, that was that was a horrible call. Like, whoever gave it to Roxanne, you know, I was just like, I don't know what fight they were watching because it was clear Casey O'Neill won the first round and the second round. I mean, she doubled the number in strikes the first two rounds. Like I said, the third round, it was a little bit close. I think it was like, what, 40-something to 30-something in strikes. But both of these fighters were letting hands go. I mean, this was a high number for both fighters. Like, I never seen Roxanne land that many shots before, you know? And I never seen Casey O'Neill commit to her striking and land this many strikes on a veteran like that. So she has improved on her striking. Like, the main thing I'll say she improved on in her striking is her ability to execute and want to execute, all right? Like, now, technically, it still needs to get better because she's still getting hit. But the more you want to execute and commit to it, that's the first that's the first step. You know, when you start extending your punches and connect connecting and extending your punches and really committing to them, that's how you get the work in that you need to, you know, improve on. You can see what you do right and what you do wrong. Like that's where I say like fighters like Jillian Robertson and Montana De La Rosa, they fall short because they won't commit to it. Like Montana might have a good jab, but if she don't commit to it, you can't really improve off of it, right? But at least Casey O'Neill is letting her hands go and she gives you something to kind of look at and say, OK, she wants to let him go. She's got decent pop. Now she's got to move her head more and work on her timing. Right. So if you're out there kind of judging her striking and saying it is bad. OK, well, it got better than the last time. But the thing about it is now that she's committing to it, she can improve off of. It. That's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? People get that confused with saying she I can't. I'm saying she can't strike. No, she can but it just needs a little bit of work. Like the more she commits to it, she'll get better. And the more she executes, she'll get better. That's all I'm saying. Like, I don't see it on high level yet, but the more she lets it go, it will get better, you know? And she let it go this, this fight. She looked better than she did in her last few fights with her striking. So that's all I'm saying when it comes down to that. But as for Roxanne, you know, shout out to Roxanne Matafari. Last fight, last fight to do a round by round on her last night. Last fight to do a uh, post-fight analysis on her for, you know, um, another era passes on. You know, last one was uh, Marion Renault. You know, she's another one of the old schools that's gone from the game. So I won't be doing any more post-fight analysis on these guys unless I, you know, go back and do a throw, you know, throwback fight on these ladies. But, you know, that's pretty much it for them. You know, uh, Roxanne Matafar, she has a long run, you know, 50 fights in the game. Um, you know, a lot of people could learn from her. She's trained with some of the best. She's fought some of the best fighters out there. Of course, she never fought Valentina, but, you know, hey, at least she was real about what she wanted to do and her goals. So, you know, much respect to Roxanne for always, you know, going in there, putting on these war wars. Uh, you know, not too many fighters could, could stop her, you know, but she'll take you the distance. And, you know, she will school you. You know, she will open something up in a lot of these fighters. Like she opened up the nose on Casey O'Neill, right? But um, no, nah, man, for real, for real um, from here, I think Casey O'Neill, I got to give her a performance. I, got, I, get, I give it like a, a B minus. I give it a, I give it a Casey O'Neill. I give it a B minus because it was much better than the last one. And the confidence she showed against a fighter with 50 fights was was very impressive. And the way she handled the crowd, you know, um, crowd comes out booing her, you know, and they know it wasn't no split decision. I figured they just want Roxy to win. But, you know, when it come down to it, you just got to you just got to know how to work the crowd. Now. I just found out that, you know, she was talking about wanting to catch a murder charge in this fight. And maybe that's why people are booing her. Well, if that's how she's talking, hey, you got to deal with it then. You know what I mean? Like, you don't get any special treatment because, hey, when Deontay Wilder said Deontay Wilder said he wanted to catch a body, hey, same thing happened to him. So you got to deal with it the same way. You know, you ain't special. Same way y'all treat Wilder whenever he says something like that. 
you will get booed for things like that. So, hey, I can't, you know, I can't co-sign that. You know what I mean? I know it's just talk, but I mean, like, I'm not going to treat one over the other. Like, y'all treat Wilder that way, you get treated the same way. But uh, when it comes down to it, I think Casey O'Neill is bringing, you know, uh, a new era of flyweights in, and that's what we need. Like I said, that's why I wanted to see her win. But the reason I picked her to win, not just because I want to see a new era, is because I knew she had what it takes to beat this version of Roxanne. Like, people kept saying, oh, you saying it's because she's young and hungry. I never said that. I said she had the right tools to beat this version of Roxanne, right? She still has that toughness and in, in the right technique to beat this version of Roxanne. And I stood by that, and y'all saw what happened, right? So, yeah, that's that's all I'm saying about that. I, I still think she has a few more tools uh, that are sharper than Macy Barber, you know, but she still needs a lot of work before she can be top five or top 10 material bottom line you know that's the real but um yeah when it comes down to it um you know it, it it was just her night it was just her night but she needs a lot of improvements before she gets to the top five you know and there's nothing wrong with that like i keep saying she's only 24 years old you know she's only 24 years old so yeah she might want to pump the brakes get a few more fights in and um you know slow her own process down before the ufc tries to over hyper to the top five right because hey the ufc they'll probably make that jennifer maya fight believe me because i've been saying jennifer maya needs to fight down and they might throw her in there with jennifer maya you know if she goes in there feeling herself too much shoot they might put her in there with jennifer maya and i still think jennifer maya can beat her right now you know for real but yeah man that's the first of the weed amounts done roxanne's retired casey o'neill moves on Next one we got coming up, of course, is Manon Firo versus Jessica I. Hopefully, Manon Firo can make the same type of statement. Or hopefully, she can destroy Jessica I and stop her, get her out of there. You know what I mean? And knock her down the rankings. And, you know, we can get this new blood takeover, right? That's what it's all about right now, guys, right? So, yeah, man, Um, like I said, I just wanted to come through and do a full-on discussion and just talk about the whole fight, you know, and uh, get y'all's thoughts in the comment section. We'll talk more in the live stream tonight. But uh, let's see. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Um. I enjoyed the fight. It was a good one. You know, number one, it was a good fight. Number two, you know, Roxanne, you know, she's a warrior, you know, so let her go ahead and ride out in the sunset. She she left everything in the octagon now. You know, I think she put on the performance that she wanted to, you know, minus the, the W, of course. You know, she gave it her all. Uh, number three, Casey O'Neill, of course, still needs work, but I'm not basing off what's going to happen in the future. I'm talking about what happened in this fight. We got to give her credit for what happened in this fight. Yes, she needs work. But at least she's doing the one thing that's taking her above these unranked fighters. And that's execution. Execution. So, yeah, guys, let me know what y'all think. Combo Breaker 99. I'm out. Subscribe. Peace.